Okay, so sampling is a very important topic. We will use this topic for hypothesis testing as well. So I will explain it the way I will start this topic. So let's say uh, we have to make raincoats. And let's say these raincoats are for 16 to 19 year old students. But before I start making them, I need to do a survey of the average height so I can decide the sizes. And honestly, there might be like hundreds of thousands of uh, 16 to 19 year old teenagers in the city. And it's impossible to take all the, uh, to note down the heights of the entire population so I can get the mean and so I can decide my sizes. So that's where sampling comes in. But so we, so through sampling what we do is we take a bunch of students, we take uh, a bunch of people representative of the entire population. So that means that I take let's say 5 or let's say 50 or 100 students, uh, 16 to 19 year old kids. Um, and then I take their heights, I find the sample mean and that sample mean is basically representative of the entire population mean. So, one thing that we know is that we said that if n is large, it follows a normal distribution. So let's say this is for our population, right? Um, and let's say our population x, in this case heights of students, follows a normal distribution with mu and let's and variance right and if I draw the bell curve this is what's gonna look like now if let's say and this is x x means basically the population um, and let's say this is x bar x bar means the sample mean so x bar follows a normal distribution with population mean that remains the same but the variance becomes sigma squared over n so um, if x follows a normal distribution x bar will also follow a normal distribution and but in this case if I sketch the bell curve the bell curve will look something like this All right. And let's say if I have to find the z-value over here, the z-value over here will be um, x minus mu upon standard deviation, that is sigma. Over here, the z-value will be x minus mu sigma over root n. Sigma over root n is your standard deviation for x bar that follows a uh, that also follows a normal distribution so the first thing we note over here is that mu is your population mean and x bar is your sample mean so So x bar follows a normal with mu and variance sigma squared over n, while x follows a normal with mu sigma with mu and variance sigma squared. All right. So an example will make this all a bit more clear. So let's say x follows a normal with mu 200 and variance 80. Now let's say um, a random sample a random sample is taken where n equals to 5 right and now we have to find the probability that x bar is greater than 207 now note, it's not x greater than 207, it's x bar greater than 207. So our first step will be converting x to x bar. So since x follows a normal distribution with mu 200 and variance 80, x bar will follow a normal distribution where mu remains the same, but your variance becomes sigma squared over n, right? 
and 80 upon 5 this becomes 16 right and now we can find probability of x greater than 207 that is z greater than 207 minus 200 upon sigma over root n that is 60, uh, root of 16 that is 4 and then it's the same uh, solving through normal distribution and calculating the probability All right. so a couple of formulas and um, terminologies to keep in mind number one is x bar x bar as I said is your sample mean now and the formula is e x over n that is the sum of all the x values upon n and this is called unbiased estimate of mu that is population mean so x bar is basically your unbiased estimate of population mean so like I said it's impossible it's not impossible but it's unrealistic of calculating of calculating the population mean because there might be hundreds of thousands of 16 to 19 year old kids um, so it's difficult to take the heights of all of these uh, students and then divide it by the total number of people to total number of students to find your population mean so x bar is representative of the population mean and is an unbiased estimate estimate of the population mean. The other one is sigma squared, sorry s squared and this is basically your variance for is your sample variance. So the formula for this is e x squared over n minus e x over n whole squared and this is multiplied by n upon n minus 1 and this is your unbiased estimate of population variance so sam the, samples, uh, the sample variance is basically your unbiased estimate of your population variance which is why it's also multiplied by n upon n minus 1 so it's basically your formula for variance multiplied by n upon n minus 1 alright so, the all right, so these are the basics for sampling in the next video we'll talk about confidence interval and proportions and we'll do a couple of questions to wrap this topic up